So I just saw Freaky and it was not great. It wasn't, it wasn't great. This is the newest film from director Christopher Landon, the director of Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You. With those two films, the concept was basically like, hey, what if we took Groundhog Day and made it into a slasher movie? So the concept of this film is, hey, what if we took Freaky Friday and turned it into a slasher movie? Which is fine in concept, especially because these films are clearly trying to be comedic. But despite these films not really taking themselves too seriously, they don't really accomplish all that much either. For a comedy, it's not really all that funny, and for a horror movie, it's certainly not scary. Regardless of what it's trying to do, it doesn't really seem like it's doing it well. There are some things that I like about this film in concept. The idea of Vince Vaughn playing a Jason-style serial killer is pretty hilarious, and once it's Vince Vaughn playing the female character, that's also pretty amusing. It was the best performance in the movie, and his best performance in years, and that's not really saying all that much. It still wasn't a great performance, honestly. Even this film's entire concept could still really work if it was just handled by different people. I genuinely wouldn't mind some sort of ironic shit posty movie like this if it was just better presented, because as it is with this film, the whole I wasn't trying to make a serious movie anyway attitude just seems like an excuse. I just wanted some sort of indication of good writing or acting or directing, and even though none of those elements were great, the absolute worst part about this movie is the editing. There are so many shots in this movie that are so quickly cut that it's frustrating from both a visual and pacing perspective. Even just normal scenes of characters talking feel incredibly janky and off-putting, like every cut between two characters has to take place at the exact moment their sentence ends and there can be no crossover whatsoever. It's really off-putting, and the editing in this film would make any movie pretty awful. The sound cues in this movie are really cheap and lame. This is a movie that I was almost enjoying near the beginning, but it just got worse and worse. The writing in this film is so incredibly lazy, and it seems like they just don't give a shit. It's one of those weird juxtapositions where on one hand they're making an R-rated film, and on the other hand it seems like they made a movie for babies. It's really predictable, and things don't make any sense, and they have really lame excuses to justify crucial moments in the plot. There are really obvious setups and payoffs that could have been much less obvious if there was any competency in the writing at all. It's just not worth it. So yeah, probably don't watch this movie. It was really lame. Maybe if you absolutely love Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you, then watch this because it's pretty similar, I guess. I'll never be watching this movie ever again. So uh, yep, and I'm giving this one a 3 out of 10. I also watched the new HBO series called How To with John Wilson. This show is executive produced by none other than Nathan Fielder of Nathan For You. If you've never heard of Nathan For You, then boy are you missing out. It's a four season long Comedy Central show where Nathan Fielder tricks unsuspecting business owners into trusting him with what to do with their business. And since they think he's actually trying to help and they're on TV, they wind up being convinced into doing pretty bizarre things. He convinces a frozen yogurt shop to release a new poo flavored frozen yogurt. He convinces a bar to rebrand itself as a theater performance to allow smoking indoors. He convinces a taxi cab company to attempt to have a baby delivered in the back of one of their cars. It is an absolutely outrageous show that has so much amazing, awkward humor in it, and the only reason I didn't cover it when it was airing is because I was worried that bringing too much attention to him would make it so that he wasn't able to make his show properly. If he got too famous, then people would recognize him and he wouldn't be able to trick anyone. He decided to end the show with a two-hour series finale at the end of the fourth season, so now that it's done and I don't have to worry about ruining the show, please watch it because it is hilarious and amazing. Anyway, How To with John Wilson is not going for the exact same thing, but so far I think it is pretty incredible. Much of this show is the result of someone just walking around New York and filming what he sees. There are many oddities and absurdities and crazy people that we see in this show, and while the goal of this show isn't to trick them into doing crazy things, it's a show that really explores these different real characters and it captures reality in a very unique way. There is a gigantic wealth of insane footage in this show. It seems as though he's got usable footage for every subject he covers. It seems as though this is the result of several years of constant filming, but I genuinely have no idea. This is like if Mr. Brainwash from Exit Through the Gift Shop had a baby with the all gas no brakes guy and also Harmony Kareen. This is a very weird show, but it is also hilarious and purposeful and profound. There is so much depth and character in every episode, and it's presented in a very poetic way. This show serves as a character study on himself and the subject
subjects he covers and New York and humanity. It expertly showcases the weirdness and insanity of human beings. It is genuinely incredible just how well all of this footage is structured together and edited. My only real complaint about this show is that episode one wasn't as entertaining as the others. It felt a little empty in places where there could have been music, but it got much better in the second half. The rest of these episodes, however, were all fantastic. This is a fascinating show that I am legitimately blown away by, and I really want to see more of it. So since his face is constantly hidden behind the camera, and therefore I'm not worried that promoting his show will ruin it, please do both me and yourselves a favor by watching this, because I really want to see a season two. And I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10, and also, Nathan, for you, it's a 9 out of 10. These are both 9 out of 10 shows. I love them. Please check them out. And yeah, de de definitely check out the how-to with John Wilson. I want to see more of it. Do it. Thank you. Oh my god! Oh no! Games are so hard! No, main character's still intact. <laughs> Hover hand. <laughs>